So you want to work as an animator in anime. Now that's a topic I get asked often about, so let's talk about it. This is a good opportunity to get to know me better too. So my name is Dong, I'm from Canada and I grew up in Toronto. I came to Japan in 2018 and found work in animation here later that year. I've been involved in series such as Somali and the Forest Spirit, Tanya the Evil, Decadence, The Third Alice, Megalobox, Dr. Stone, To Love Rue, and some small parts of Macross and Haikyuu and a bunch of others. My journey started after high school when I went to study animation for four years at Sheridan College in uh, the province of Ontario, close to where I grew up. I remember at the time one of Sheridan's alumni, Dean Dubois, was winning all those awards for his film series How to Train Your Dragon, so I knew a lot of strong artists came out of there. I became interested in working in Japan after doing an internship at a local studio in my third year. So I started taking Japanese lessons and in my fourth year I made a film in the anime style so that it might be useful to me later on. You can see that film on this channel, it's called Halcyon Days of Youth. After graduation I worked for the animation arm of Canadian media conglomerate Chorus called Nirvana. If you are from Canada, you would know that they own like half of all Canadian television. They also own the Toon Boom animation software. At the time, I was on contract but was offered a full position after a year, which is extremely rare in this industry, but I turned it down and left for Japan in 2018. I spent the first six months of my stay just trying to figure things out and improve my Japanese. I managed to pass the N2 level of the Japanese language proficiency test, which was the second highest. It was then I wrote a resume, prepared a portfolio, made a demo reel, and I think I submitted them to about 5 studios and I managed to get 3 interviews. These interviews were also followed by a practical exam where they would ask you to draw something or do some kind of animation exercise. I ended up working for Studio Nut. They did the third season of Fully Coolie, they did Yojo Senki or Tanya the Evil, and Decadence. Studio Nut is pretty new and they were originally part of Madhouse and they only recently separated from Madhouse after One Punch Man. And because of that, almost all of my coworkers are ex Madhouse. So, if you want to work in anime, either in Japan or remotely overseas, what should you do? Your own journey will obviously be different from mine, but there are some general things you can do to get into the industry. When you are working overseas remotely, you will be a freelancer taking in work when you can. This is nice as it allows you to be part of the Japanese uh, you know, animation industry without making any major changes to your lifestyle. But I want to stress that you are unlikely able to make a living solely on doing freelance anime work. So you really need to do this as a secondary gig as your income from this will be both low and inconsistent. If you want to actually come to Japan like me, you'll be much more likely to have consistent work and make a livable wage. But obviously it is a huge commitment, so think hard about what you want to do. There are also different types of animation work you can do, so either as a key animator or a uh, second key animator where you just draw Ganga. Uh, check my video on this subject, you have no idea what I'm talking about. For those who want to do remote work, in general, a person would need two out of the following three things. A conversational level Japanese ability, a strong animation portfolio, and a relatively large social media following. The flow of getting work is generally this. A studio will announce a new show they are working on, usually through a teaser or some sort of publicity stint. If you want to work on it, you will then contact the studio either through email or directly on Twitter, the social media platform that all the animators use. I recommend doing this via Twitter as you can directly contact the right specific people instead of a general inquiry email account. Look for the production managers, they're called uh, Seisaku or the producer of that particular show as they are the ones coordinating the freelancers and divvying up the episode. Message them saying you are a freelance animator looking for work, either as a key animator or a second key animator if you don't have too much experience. And then you would provide them with somewhere that they can see your previous work and or your demo reel, either on Twitter itself or some other place. After that, hope for the best. There are several ways to improve your chances of getting work. First, uh, obviously messaging them in Japanese is best as not actually that many studios have English speaking staff. Although make sure you can actually write and understand Japanese. Unless you have taken the JLPT N2, don't bother and just write it in English. Individual studios will either work with English speakers or straight up refuse to work with some, so do some research. Twitter is a good place to start. Speaking of which, having a large following on Twitter is a plus as it makes you more visible. Having a strong portfolio of works is also important as this is a very competitive field. If they like you, they will offer you a couple scenes and set up a production meeting. If you're doing second key animation, there isn't generally a production meeting. Also, they might have you do a practical test to just test your ability. 
In general, it is a good idea to see what your fellow peers are doing on Twitter. This helps you get an idea of what you should do on the platform. If you check out my Twitter account, it's in the description. I've followed some international animators that often freelance on Japanese shows. Start there and check out what they post, how they set up their profile descriptions, etc. If you were more of a full experience, you would come to Japan like me. I learned so much in my short time here in Japan. The director of Mob Psycho and Decadence, director Tachikawa-san, taught me most of what I know about animation. For this path, you don't really need a social media presence of any kind, but you will need decent Japanese ability, a strong portfolio, and at least a bachelor's degree to get a working visa. First of all, you have to get yourself in Japan. Most passports let you enter the country as a tourist for three months, a working holiday visa for six months, and if you need more time, you can enroll yourself in a, a Japanese language school or something for a year, and use that to improve your Japanese while you're at it. This is important as most Japanese studios will straight up ignore your resume if your address is outside of the country. Speaking of Japanese, 99% of the studios here will be using it. So make sure you can read and write and speak Japanese, at least uh, around the N2 level. There are a few studios with English translators on staff where the animators don't need to speak Japanese, such as uh, Studio Science Saru, where I have some good friends that work there. So go to the website of the studio you are interested in and look to see if they are recruiting. Most studios will recruit around the staff for April each year, but some look for animators year-round. Most animators in Japan start for a few years doing cleanup before they move up, but I did not recommend doing cleanup in Japan as a lot of the bad things associated with the industry are with cleanup. So depending on the studio and your ability, you might be able to start at a higher position. I myself was lucky enough to start as a key animator. When you find a studio you want to apply to, snail mail them your resume and portfolio and hope they give you an interview. Japanese resumes are pretty unique, so be careful. And in terms of portfolio, try to show them your previous animation work if possible. Illustrations and sketches are pretty good to include too, as well as uh, something that can show that you can draw layout. So make sure those sketches don't just have a character floating white space and draw in a background. For me, that film I made in school carried my portfolio. Again, it's called uh, House in the Days of Youth and you can see it on this channel. I was pretty inexperienced when I made it, but it had single-handedly helped me out find work both in Canada and here in Japan. So think about maybe taking a year and just make a great short film. If everything works out well, you'll get invited for an interview. The interviews are quite normal. They would ask you about your previous work, ask why you want to work here, and they will constantly remind you of how hard it is an industry this is, and they really want to make sure you are prepared. Although there was this one interview I did where every candidate has their interview together at the same time in one room, and that was kind of weird. And there was also this interview where I remember walking into the waiting room with the other candidates and they all had these full suits on while I was in t-shirts and shorts. After that comes the practical exam. These vary studio to studio, but you'll be generally asked to draw something or to animate something. Subjects dealing with hands and anatomy seems pretty common. And there was this one exam where I was asked to do a layout and animate a scene as well as do a cleanup. That exam took 8 hours. If all goes well, they'll hire you. If you do manage to get work and are not sure what to do next, I made this channel just for you. I have a video series on doing Japanese timesheets, so check that out as most people seem to get confused by that. Remember that Japanese animators are also layout artists, and I hope to talk about the layout process at a later time. Some general words of warning though, it's no secret that the Japanese animation industry is a difficult one to be in, so be prepared for what you are about to get into. I used to work 6 day weeks, but now I occasionally will get a 2 day weekend. My pay is also around half of what I would make in Toronto, although cost of living in Tokyo is much lower. So make sure you know why you want to work in this industry. In fact, write it out so that your reason is concrete. Share it with me in the comments too, as I am very interested to know why people want to work here. For me, my reason was to look for greater creative satisfaction. And I guess I have found it in my time here. Anyways, I am sure you guys have questions, so Ask them in the comments and I plan to make a follow up to this to get into more detail and to answer those questions. Thanks for listening, follow me on Twitter and a big heartfelt thanks to all those who are supporting this channel on Patreon. I will be using Patreon to post some more behind the scenes work of mine that are hard to make public so it'd be a great place to further understand the art of animation. Alright, peace, see you guys next time.